Right, I hope um, I hope you can see this all right. Um, if you're watching this week's video, this week's video that you're watching shouldn't have been this week's video. This week's video should have been this week's video because what I was planning to do, if that makes any sense at all. Ow. Hello and welcome to another video. Um, this week's video wasn't the video I'd planned. Anybody who knows and watches the channel know that I live over in the UK and probably like most parts of the world, we've gone uh, into another lockdown um, over the last couple of weeks. So I'm really limited on what I can do photography wise because I can't really travel anywhere. And this video really is an example of um, grabbing opportunities when you can hopefully. Um, if I explain the situation, because I'm working from home at the minute um, and we look out onto the Trent Valley in our garden, uh, we've got a brand new apple tree in the garden and quite a big lawn, uh, lawn area and when I'm working upstairs I often have a look out the window and see what's going on and you can often see uh, you know, what animals and things are about and I often find myself running down the stairs with a camera and leaning over the fence and taking a bit picture of a buzzard or a roe deer that may have wandered across the field. Um, but yeah, over the last sort of 10 days, what I've been noticing is that we've had approximately up to 10 blackbirds that would be, um, I think probably trying to establish a territory and establish mates for the, for the upcoming spring. So they've been sort of running around, bouncing around this apple tree quite happily fighting amongst themselves and stuff and then uh, probably five days ago that all changed we had an interloper onto the garden in the form of a field fair who's now been known become known as a tiller um, it's really weird actually because there's a probably 15 to 20 field fairs just over the fence that are, field, that are, that are feeding on uh, where the horses walk up and down there's a thin strip behind the fence where that they use, and they're obviously feeding there. He is the only one that comes into the garden and seems to have taken the Bramley apple tree and the fallen apples underneath it as his own, and he doesn't allow anything else blackbird style on the garden. He's not so bothered about the smaller birds that are feeding on the um, feeders that I've got up. He tolerates those. He's not bothered at all. But anything that might eat an apple, that's it. It's, they're gone. What happened yesterday is we had a snowfall as well, which is quite unusual for here. So I just thought it was a good opportunity to get out and see if I can get some images of him in the snow, eating the apples, and probably some film as well. So I'm going to try that today. Now, anybody who watched last week's video will know I've started a new series on um, beginner's wildlife photography using entry-level kit, which my entry-level kit that I've got for this is a Nikon D3200 and a Tamron 70-300 lens. So what I'm going to do today, although I'm going to be shooting with the Sony and the Tamron, I'm also going to take the uh, Nikon out as well, simply because this is one of those situations where um, anybody doing beginners photography, if they, they have a similar situation like this, the stuff that I'm going to be doing today is they could also use it to get some images like this. So um, I'm going to get off out there and show you what my setup is. I've already taken some stuff out. The field fair Attiller is out and about, he's chasing stuff off. He's up in the brown apple tree at the minute. You probably can't see on this little camera, but he is out there. Um, so I'm going to get off into position, hopefully, try and get some images. So I'll see you out there. Right, right. so hopefully you can see the setup I've got out here. There's the, the apple tree with the apples underneath it. And um, anybody who's doing my, looking at my beginners series, this is what I was talking about, about like an old shed. This is an old metal shed. It's actually going to be disposed of in the spring um, because it's had it but what I've done is I've just slung some scrim netting over it and over the last few days I've had an old plant pot sticking out to represent the front end of a lens and obviously this morning I'm going to get in it as you can see I'm 
very uncomfortable. Just down on this ground sheet, this is why I've got so many clothes on because it's going to be freezing, as you can see from my breath. And I've got the tripod ready because I want to do some filming with the, um, I'm going to have the Sony and the Tamron on there. And then I've also, as I was saying, got the Nikon to do some, hopefully some images with that. Um, if the field fair doesn't come back, I'll even try that trick of, I'll phone Leia up because she's in the house and get her to walk out here and then walk back in because uh, he might be watching me but I think he drops down into the field there so hopefully it should be okay so I'm going to get down into here and uh, we'll see if we can get some pictures right so this is my impromptu hide um, I'm not as uncomfortable as I thought I was going to be actually um, it's going to be get really cold on this floor I'm on a ground sheet but um, because the weather's so cold anyway I'm just waiting for Attila to come back. Um, so really, I think I'm going to be quiet in a minute and just wait and see what happens. Hopefully he'll come back. Hopefully I'll get some pictures. We might actually get a little bit of snow as, again um, in a while, so that'll make it interesting. Um, the other thing to remember when shooting in snow is that if you're, uh, like I am at the minute, I'm shooting at the ground, so I'll just show you the shot I've got on the back of the camera when I liven her up hopefully you can see that um, what the camera wants to do when you've got a, an image that is predominantly white is turn that white to grey so I don't know whether you can see that shows up on the back I've got exposure compensation at plus 1.3 stops at the minute just to bring that snow back to white um, if I was to shoot that normally, uh, I can get my thumb out and show you that. I take that back down to what it normally should show it. As you see, you get that horrible, horrible grey colour, which is what I don't want. So, oops, by taking that back up to there, we get the snow back to a nice white. I um, just want to change the ISO because I've managed to flip it up. Be okay at 800 because I'm at 1640th, so an f6.3. So hopefully he'll come back and we'll get some shots. Um, as I said, I'll keep my eye on those settings as the weather changes because I don't know whether it's going to get any brightness today. As I say, I think we might get some snow, so um, I may have to change those settings again, but generally. When you're shooting anything that's predominantly white, your camera's meters want to turn it to a, a like a light grey. Um, so you often have to uh, use exposure compensation because uh, you know it fools the camera's meter if you like. Anyway, I'll get back to you in a while. Um, I don't know whether you could see there. That's the sort of view I've got through the scrim netting, and I'm hoping that um, he's going to be reasonably okay with that seeing as I've I've had this out for a while now so we'll see one or two of the other birds are around we just need to get a blackbird on here and then he'll go ballistic so I'll catch you in a minute right one thing I do have to do is um, apologize for the road noise unfortunately as I've told you before, we've got the River Trent on one side of us, but to the front of the house um, is the A1, which is a major, like a motorway. Um, and the road noise is just constant. We get used to it, but obviously it's going to affect the sound here, but there's not really anything I can do, do about it. Um, it's a little bit quieter today because of the lockdown, I think, but not an awful lot quieter, I have to be honest. Um, Tiller's actually back now. He's just chased a blackbird off who dared to come onto his garden. And he's up in this Bramley apple tree at the minute. So if he drops down, what I'm going to do is try and get some footage. And if I do, I'll put that footage over now while I'm talking. Um, incidentally, as I said, this is... If I was going to use this throughout the spring and summer, um, I would 
probably improve this uh, to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, it does really, you know, it is could potentially be a, a small hide um, if I cleared it out and, and sort of did it up, but I think it's past its best, so I think it's going to be on its way, but anybody, as I say, who's following my beginners um, photography series, anything like this that you've got on your garden that you can utilise as a hide, um, you know, use it, utilise it, Any because the thing is, that if that's been there for years, the animals and birds are used to it anyway, so that gives you a massive advantage straight away. Um, as I say with this one, all I've done is thrown some scrim netting over it and stuck a plant pot between the door and jammed it there just so that uh, the birds would get used to that. Then just replaced that with my lens this morning and I don't know whether you can hear the birds, they're, they're feeding on the feeder next to the apple tree, uh, just a little bit close to the house and not bothered at all. So if you were to set up some purchase for the, the um, blue tits and great tits and other birds that we've got coming to the feeders then you know you could get some shots of that but as I say this morning I'm just after um, a tiller here and hopefully you'll be seeing some footage that I'm I'm taking at the moment um, while I'm recording this at the same time so I'm going to stick it with it here for a bit longer and then I think I'm going to try and use the Nikon to try and get a few shots as well um, and we'll see how we go it's uh, it's not as cold as I thought, so I am lasting better than I thought laid, laid on the concrete here, but um, yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where you don't really want to leave while you're getting some good images and some good shots, and as I say, it's continuing, starting to snow again, it keeps keep getting a flurry coming and then stop. Um, but yeah, for a couple of hours, easy wildlife photography this isn't bad at all now what I'd, what I'd recommend that you do if you want to try something like this at home you don't have to have an apple tree in your garden but <clears throat> what I would suggest you do is just get some some bramley some cooking apples from the shop and uh, be quite rough with them when you're bringing them home so you know the bru more bruised the better because they'll go softer and the birds will like them like that and just scatter a few round on your garden and again if you are following the beginners photography um, series that I'm doing what I would do if, I, if I'd got a situation like this where I'd got field fairs in the in the area like I have now is I'd be looking at where can I place those apples where the background is going to be most attractive and even you know if I'm shooting low down Where's the foreground? Oh, that's a buzzard. Getting mobbed by some crows. That's twice I've seen him this morning. Uh, he's probably going down to my pheasant, which I had to move yesterday before it went underwater. But that's another story. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, this is a perfect... If you've got field fairs and red wings around, get some apples, stick them in your garden put them somewhere where you can get your best photograph from so what often looks good with things like field fairs and red wings because they feed on the ground is if you can get low down so that you can you can actually blur the foreground and blur the background which gives you just that in focus section in the middle where the bird is and then a lovely blurred background and foreground so if you get down low but obviously what you want to do is put those apples where you know you've, you've got no distractions. So again, you know, you can put the apples down and three, four days, five days, eight days, ten days a week, you know, whatever, a month earlier, you can check what that situation looks like by getting into where you're going to take the pictures from. Focusing on the apples and taking a few shots and seeing, is there anything distracting in the background? You know, is there anything distracting in the foreground? Could I change the colour slightly? Is the, are the bushes behind giving me a colour I don't like or whatever? You can do all that beforehand. And then when the birds start coming down to them, again, if you've got something like this, just set this up so it's ready. Get in there, see what happens. And, you know, that's how it's done, really. It's, um, it's nothing complicated about it and uh, hopefully you'll have some similar success but 
that's all it's about is watching what's happening around you and then taking advantage of that situation if it comes along and just pre-planning as much as you can in this situation which again is good for people who are just starting in wildlife because you know you can pre-set everything up you all you're really doing in the end is is firing the shutter so yeah i hope that helps anybody who's just starting out as i say it's this is a perfect project if you've got this type of bird in in the area and you've got a you know you don't as i say you don't have to have an apple tree you can just bring some apples in right i think i'm going to call it a day for today um as you can see i've flipped over onto my back because my side was absolutely killing me i'm actually lying on the bean bags that i bought to put the nikon on so i'm not really shot with the nikon today not really because um I didn't think I could get any shots because I've got this one set up on the tripod um, it's really difficult to sh either shoot around it or try and get this one off and the other one on without disturbing the birds outside so um, I think if I come in and do it again I'll just bring the Nikon and do some shooting with that so really enjoyable hour and a half I'm just starting to ache so much that um, yeah I think it's time to call it and it's pretty cold as well even though I'm well wrapped up I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway, and uh, if you have, please give it a like. If you've not subscribed to the channel, then uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, hopefully you've found some tips on this video that will be useful, especially, as I say, this isn't one of my beginners um, series videos, but there are a lot of things in here that you can use on your own back garden, a lot of tips that perhaps you can use um, to spend an hour and a half on a freezing cold floor but at least you get some images, so hopefully you agree with that. I'm going to stick the images up now on the end of this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the footage. I'll see you next week for another, another video. Cheers, bye. Right, I almost forgot actually, just before I go, a couple of weeks ago I set a competition to win one of these. This is a Vanguard uh, travel tripod, carbon fibre. Um, it was really just to celebrate the fact that my channel reached over a thousand subscribers. I uh, had quite a lot of entries and I think it's only probably appropriate that we do the draw of the entries from the um, answer to the question, which was a... Um, a video that I did and in, in that video uh, I think it was my disasters of 2020 my photographic disasters that had occurred and I wanted people to find the visual clue in that video to a heavy metal British heavy metal band obviously the answer was Iron Maiden so here's the correct answers I'll tip those into there and the winner will be getting let's have a try and pick one out without grabbing 12 at once I've got just one I have just got one and let's see who the winner is and who's going to be getting this tripod and the winner is Karen Beaumont so Karen uh, I've got your email address I will be contacting you shortly after this video comes out on Sunday and I'll get your address and this will be winging its way across to you so congratulations I hope you enjoy it and uh, perhaps we'll do another one at 2,000 subscribers thanks a lot to everybody who entered um, it's a really good response and um, yeah I'll see you next week mm -hmm.